Welcome to the Mayflower Mosaic Radio Theater Live. Tonight's dramatic episode is a true crime presentation entitled... Suicide for a Kiss. This play is written and directed by Mr. Robert Timmis. Our sound effects director is Mr. Matt Jones... Musical accompaniment is provided by Keegan Mann, Nick Kleiner, and Garrett Green. Voice actors for tonight's performance are Robert Timmis as Sheriff Frank Matthews, Ben Jones as Detective Joe Wilcox, Rebecca Randolph as Mabel Sturgeon, Louisa Jones as Rachel Sturgeon, some guy named Chris Tatarian as Corey Surgeon, Sturgeon, Cat King as Ruth Cadle, Dave DeNoyer as Raymond Cadle, and special guest Mayor Mike Beamish is playing the part of Doc Schilling. The characters, yes, the characters are all real people. These events that we're describing here tonight really did happen. Some of the dialogue is imagined for the sake of our radio play, but make no mistake, these events are true. Ripped from the headlines, as it were. And these events happened 92 years ago this very week, right here in and around Troy, Ohio. Join us now at the Sturgeon Home in the early morning hours of Sunday, November 28th, 1926. Everybody else. Mother, Uncle Raymond will turn up. Ruth's fast asleep in that chair. Even she was too tired to wait up. I don't know what kind of business would be conducted this late at night. Oh, there's the lights of the Buick now. I'll go wake your Aunt Ruth. Raymond will want to go straight away. They still have a long way to go to get to your grandpa's. Answer the door so no one will wait. Yes, ma'am. Raymond, you've been drinking. Shut up! Where have you been? It's none of your business, Ruth. Where'd you get your drinks from? I said it's none of your damn business. Get in the car, Ruth. What was that all about? I tried not to wake you, Corey. That brother of yours was wakeful enough. When I hear a man raise his voice to my daughter and swear oaths at his wife... That's wakeful enough. He's lucky he got out of here in a hurry. I'll not stand for that behavior. He wasn't himself. He was... He'd been drinking. Sullen and angry. He didn't even kiss Ruth. She seemed hurt by that. They didn't say two words after he cussed her. Well, he's her problem now. Everybody to bed or will never get any sleep tonight. It's already half past midnight. Mabel! Mabel, get up! Corey! Get up! Get up! Wake up someone! Oh, Lord, what's happened? Ruth? What's wrong? Ruth's been hurt. Mabel, woman, get out of the man's way. Let him set her down. Here, use this cot. She's bleeding. What happened? There, there's been an accident. She fell out of the Buick. Fell? Fell on the Urbana Pike. How do you fall out of a car this time of night? She was sleeping. Her, her arm must have hit the door latch. She fell out on the turn at the McDowell Farm. Raymond, have you tried to wake her? Mabel, stop! I've tried. She won't come to. You've been gone long enough to get home to your wife, to your dad's. If she fell out at the McDowell place, what took you so long to get back here? You weren't my first stop. I tried both, the Coleman and the McCullough hospitals. I couldn't get into neither. Would you please call a doctor? 
Yes, I will call our doctor, but I am ashamed for him to see you in the condition that you're in. And when he comes, I want you to step into the kitchen. I'll take her to Dayton then. Yeah, go get your ma. I think you should. <laughs> yes, I, I will. that doctor of ours? Where is Raymond, for that matter? Corey, dear, the doctor will be along presently. Raymond hasn't had time to fetch Ma so quickly. You know that. I know. I just feel helpless standing here while Ruth lays there in a heap and bleeding. I know you sent Raymond after Ma to get him out of here, and you were right, too. Doc Schilling doesn't need to see him in, in, in that condition. I'm sure the drive to St. Paris and back will sober him up. Come on, Doc. Make it snappy. Finally, get the door open and get him in here. Greetings, Sturgeons. Pardon my brusqueness, but where is that patient? In here on the cot. When did this happen? Sometime after 12.15, but before 1.30. We're not definite. How did it happen? We can only tell you what Raymond, her husband, my brother, told us. Which is? That she fell from their auto onto the roadway while at speed rounding McDowell's curve on the Urbana Pike. Did she strike something, or was she struck? We don't know. You'll have to ask Raymond. Well, call him in. There's more I need to know, the better. He's not here. He's gone after his mother to bring her here. He was drunk when they left here, mind you. Corey... Well, he may as well know. We sent him out to sober up and get out from underfoot. He's no use here. I see. Well, I'm afraid none of us are much help here. What do you mean? Well, you see how she bleeds from her nose and ear? Yes. Well, that's an indication she's bleeding internally. She's bleeding internally because her skull is fractured. Quite badly, I'm afraid. You see the depression here? The skull is broken in compound fracture. I'm afraid she can live but only a short time. It's a bad fracture. We had no idea she never woke up. And she isn't going to. Is the doctor right to make such a dire prognosis? Can anything be done to rescue poor Ruth? Will Raymond return to embrace his mate for what may be the last time? For the answers to these and other questions, stay tuned for part two of Suicide for a Kiss. To be heard later in this broadcast. This has been a Mayflower Mosaic Radio Theater Live dramatic presentation. We remind you that the events portrayed here are true and that some of the dialogue is imagined for the sake of the radio play. <laughs>